I have the great fortune of having with me an amazing dude, Devin Larratt, like world champion arm wrestler. So today we're going to talk about all things arm wrestling. Devin. Hey, buddy. Thank you for having me. No hey, worries. We're, we're practically neighbors. Hey, well, this is this is what you, uh, this is what I'm discovering. You said yeah. Richmond, so. Just, I'm like just down the road from you. Close, close. Good. That's cool. So we got to talk more often. Yeah. So, yeah. so no, listen, um, obviously today we're talking about arm wrestling. And um, first of all, I got to say thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to come spend, you know, uh, a little bit of time with me and, and educate me. You know, I'm always about learning. So this is something I'm going to learn about today. Thank you so much for having me. It's my honor and privilege to be on your platform. <laughs> oh, jeez, man. You're, 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 you're buttering me up with the flowery <laughs> words. But thank you very much, brother. So let's, let's get right to it. So Devin, so tell me, why professional arm wrestling? Ah, yeah, great question. Why? Um, well, so arm wrestling is a fight sport. Okay. Okay. So the whole reason why people do fight sports, arm wrestling's right in that group. Yep. Okay. Uh, the rush you get, uh, there's a path to self betterment. Once you kind of get into the sport, you realize that it's like a miniature martial art. So there's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's and that's fascinating when you see like a little dude beat a big dude, or a, you know what seems to be a weak old man win the world championships. You know, all these things are intriguing and, uh, you know, it's a path to self-discovery and, uh, you know, like all sports. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, I, ha I have my list of questions, but something you just said there uh, tweaked a, a, a thought in my head. So, um, obviously, in, in your sport, you're familiar with the schoolboy. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, it's funny because uh, when I first saw, it wasn't until recently that I actually learned a little bit more about him. Mm -hmm. I just... I just saw him on the thumbnails, and the way that they make the thumbnails, they make it seem like he's a little schoolboy. Oh <laughs> but but then I heard how much this dude actually yeah, yeah. weighs, and I was like, oh, okay, that, I'm not surprised anymore. We are basically exactly the same size. Yeah, schoolboy and I. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He might actually be a tiny bit bigger. He's a young man. Yeah, he actually two days ago just tore his bicep. Oh, really? He blew his bicep snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> not, not even arm wrestling. No. Okay. Super talented kid. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so uh, him and his brother run that. Yep. Does his brother also arm wrestle? He's also very, very good. Both yeah. these brothers, uh, they're, they're Russian. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex is the older brother. Yeah. Uh, and he lives down in Miami. Yep. Um, right. And yeah, he's a pro arm wrestler. He kicks ass. But more famously, his younger brother, their parents with Russian creativity called him Alexander. <laughs> uh, you know, great name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Easy to remember. Yeah. So he's still over there. Um, but they get together all the time and they collab and... Yeah, they both kick ass. They're both basically world-level arm wrestling guys, yeah. Okay, cool. So, Devin, tell me, how did you make the transition from your previous career into uh, in professional arm wrestling? And by the way, it's funny, you know, um, I knew of you long before arm wrestling. Uh -huh. you, just for whatever reason, I, um, having an interest uh, before I joined, having an interest in the Canadian Forces, mm. your, your name was legendary. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> but, but anyway, so, so tell me, uh, how did you make the transition from your previous career to, to professional arm wrestling? Well, so, I mean, I arm wrestled from the time I was a kid. Okay. Okay, so I grew up with arm wrestling. I arm wrestled in the regular force. Uh, they actually, they, they used to sponsor me. The okay. Yeah, the regular force used to send me to championships. Got to the special forces and obviously, you know, changed things a lot, right? Uh, so, yeah, what happened, it's actually, it's really crazy. Um, I loved my old job. And I, and I don't even like to call it a job, <laughs> right? But I, I loved that life. Um, and, and I love arm wrestling. Those are two of my big passions in life. And... It's interesting that those two, arm wrestling is actually probably what made me have to leave the forces. Oh, really? It's probably the reason I had to leave. I mean, there's a lot of factors, but uh, what happened in around 2014, 
Um, so I used to, like when I used to compete, because I competed all through, mm -hmm. um, I used to downplay everything. I used to say I was a farmer. I'd shy away from cameras and media. didn't have a YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, and then around 2014, 15, uh, arm wrestling started to pop. Mm. Yeah, ESPN picked us up. There was <clears throat> shows and... My ego kind of was wanting to be in the spot a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, and it just wasn't jiving. So, so yeah, so I made the cut at that time, pretty much. Uh, they moved me into recruiting. Yes. Uh, so I finished out my career as so I could be a little bit more public, and then uh, and then yeah, and then I took the jump, man, and that was that was wild, you know, going from having a job. And having an income with kids and a family to, I'm going to be a professional arm wrestler. <laughs> but the potential to make this potential for for income is is yeah, way great. way well, higher. It is for sure. But but at the same time, you know, um, I, I I really love it. I love uh, the community. I love to compete. It's something I can do my whole life in uh, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, life is a twisty, turny thing, but I do think that I'll be involved in the sport of arm wrestling until I die. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Now, um, so when you made that transition, um, was there anything about it? You saw, you know, you're going from, from your, your previous career to this. Was there anything about it that you found challenging, you know, since you've been doing it all of that time? Was there anything about that transition other than, I guess, the, the loss of regular income? Was there anything else that you found challenging? Uh, well, I think that, you know, people think that they're professionals, mm -hmm. you know, in whatever it is they choose to spend their time at. Uh, you know, you think, you think that you're on a level or you think that you're some kind of an expert. I mean, even if you are... A world champion you probably think you're pretty good at it mm -hmm. uh, and that was kind of the case with me uh, you know in 2008 uh, I was working but I was a world champion at the same time and then what happened was you know by 2016-17 I had become a full-time arm wrestler mm -hmm. so by 2017-18 and um, I, what I realized is that there was still so much to learn in terms of professionalism and, you know, even when you're at a level, you know, you constantly have to humble yourself and remind yourself that you're a human being with, you know, 40 or something years on the planet, which is still, I mean, relatively in any kind of scale and any kind of thing is, is still very small. Yes. So there's always things to learn. So you have to always be willing to go back and revisit lessons and continue to learn and never think that you know. Um, because the more we learn, the more things simplify and purify. And then, and then you figure out that you were wrong about everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny, you know. Um, as you're saying that, I was thinking about, uh, thinking back to when I was training in Taekwondo. And so I'm working my way up, up the belt system. And, um, I ended up, I never ended up getting my, my, um, my black belt just because of time commitments with, with, uh, training for, uh, orthopedics and whatnot. But at that time, uh, I was a red belt and I was testing for my black stripe. So it was red belt, black stripe, and then black belt. And um, I remember thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to be a black belt and it's going to be awesome. Like I know shit. And I right. remember, I remember my, my uh, instructor saying, like, you, you have it all backwards, man. Like black belt just means that, you know, the basics of the system and, and that you are capable of learning. And then that's what, after that is when the real learning it's crazy, starts. right? Right. And it's this, crazy. this guy was a, a third, third Dan black belt. And he trained under a guy who, uh, in Ottawa here, Tay E. Lee, um, who was like a fifth Dan. Um, and it's like, so like, yeah, black belt means absolutely nothing. You think you, you think it means something, but it's a scale. It's a scale. It's a scale. I find the further I go, the more things are refined mm -hmm. and simplified. Yes. And it's the simplification process where the real truth lies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
that idea of simplification makes me think of how in orthopedic surgery, like the first time I learned a procedure, it's like, okay, well, I know all the 10 steps and I can do those 10 steps. You tell me the 10 steps, I can do the 10 steps. But what defines the difference between when I first learned that procedure and when I did that like a hundred cases later yeah. is that, oh, on the hundredth one, I know, oh, I don't have to do those 10 steps, yeah. man. I, I, could, I could do steps two, six, and seven and get the same result. And I, you know, it's, everything is simplification. Minimum viable product. Yes, yes. And the one thing that's the most important thing becomes everything. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me, you mentioned a little bit before um, the nature of martial arts, okay, uh, of which arm wrestling is one. Given your previous profession, are there similarities between your previous career and your present occupation now? I remember when I was a child, um, my father, um, his father was involved in the war mm -hmm. uh, on our side, yep. on the North American side. Yep. Um, my mother's side of the family is German and, um, and they would fight. They would fight and fight and fight. And all they talk about was the war, right? Because it was very intimate to them. Yes. Right? And um, my mother's uh, mother was actually an Olympian and sometimes the conversation would somehow blend between her stories of, of skiing and the stories from the war. And my father would relay to me that, that sports, every, every sport is derived from war. All sports are derivatives of war. It's a civilized way that we can compete with each other without having... Without to... killing each other. Yes, it's a beautiful thing, right? Mm. Sports is uh, a building of <laughs> civilization and humanity. Um, and, I mean, we could argue, I mean, so is war at times. Mm -hmm. However, war is much more serious and much more rough and farther away from humanity I suppose further away from civilized behavior yep so but the higher up you go in the levels of combative sport the more it starts to approach lessons that you'll learn in war mm -hmm. um, things like uh, you know surprise and initiative and and obviously the discipline it requires to do well in this field I mean they're very they're very uh, transferable yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, for sure, for sure. War is so serious. Sport can be as well. Yes, yeah. no doubt, no doubt. So um, one of the things um, that you also talked about a little bit was training. Um, so tell me, how do you train for arm wrestling? Oh, as a doctor, you are going to have some serious objections to me. <laughs> well, so, so before you answer, let me tell you, I am, um, so like I said, I knew of you, uh, I, I knew you, uh, of you long before your sort of jump from the forces into uh, um, professional, like full-time professional. And I remember some of the first videos that you must have put out oh, yeah. that were available on YouTube. Okay. And I just remember watching them and like going... What is this man doing? <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, these workouts are I, I, like ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah. tell me, how you train? Well, I, I've trained many different ways uh, across my career. Yep. Um, and where I've gotten to now is quite an evolution. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's with the intentions to be as good as I can. Yes. Okay. Um, there, is, uh, there is sacrifice and there is... Uh, there is a belief that I'm very mortal in my training system, so I go away a little bit from some of the, I'd say, common practices of health and balance mm -hmm. that, you know, we hold on to dearly in most things that, you know, health professionals and athletes advocate for. Um, so it's been a progression for me. Uh, I've certainly been involved in lots of sports, trained my whole body to do many things across my career. It's come to a point now where I am an arm wrestler basically exclusively. 
Mm-hmm. Like I don't really <coughs> train my body to do much else other but, than that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so basically exercises and training systems fell away, fell away, fell away until a transition point about three years ago. And I, I made these decisions based off of things that I've seen. I call it way of the giant pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Explain. Do you know about giant pumpkins? No. Okay. So, you never seen giant pumpkins? I, no, I know what I, I know what they are, but I don't know anything about them other than they're huge. Right. They're massive. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that was my goal. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right. Yeah. To make one giant pumpkin. Okay. Okay. So what I did was I pinched off all the other flowers on the vine. Yeah. Okay. And I was left with only one thing: it's my right hand. Okay. okay, so although you guys do go both, we arms. do. Okay, but I refer to this as the party hand. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. All my energy. Yep. All my homework. Yep. Is just right-handed arm wrestling. Okay. I train specifically <laughs> three or four times a day, just training the movements of arm wrestling. Yep. Just with my right hand. Okay. And it's been this way for about three years. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I break my training probably into three. Uh, families, okay. Uh, the one would be practical application of the sport, mm-hmm. okay, which is the big part of it, and it's the fun part of it. It's the part that I practice with the club here in Ottawa and when I travel, and it's basically just low intensity arm wrestling. Yeah, yeah, it's just getting on the table <coughs> and practicing. The other would be um, what I would say is conditioning and rehab, mm-hmm. which I spend a lot of time on. Uh, Ligaments and tendons take a beating. Mm-hmm. Okay, they require constant maintenance and upgrading. Uh, so a lot of my stuff is just to push fluids through them, push fluids, uh, keep them healthy. Uh, basically, just pump. Yep. Just pump fluids through <clears throat> high rep, low effort, at regular intervals, every day, lifestyle. Yep. And uh, the last one is is strength and specific movements. Okay. Yeah, which also I do every day you know just and it's very simple just a couple movements i really focus on Mm -hmm. that's it okay yeah so um so you know you said that you've trained multiple different ways over the years um so one of the things that i wonder about um you know now that you've been in this for whatever like this sport for 20 20 plus years or whatever almost 30 now i guess yeah so um is there a move, and you mentioned just a little bit, you do like some of your work is for like, you know, sort of maintenance rehab. Is there a move for you to focus like, well, here, let me back up for a second. I had a conversation with one of your ex colleagues uh, who's also retired now, um, and we were talking about uh, rehabilitation for op- tactical operators, uh, Randy Turner. Oh, great! And guy. and um, we he he was saying how he's counseled some young guys who are either trying to get on the force, who are on the force, and it, and they're all just about bigger, faster, stronger, bigger, faster, stronger, sure. bigger, faster, stronger. That's all they care about. Mm-hmm. And then he, as he got older. He realized, you know, whether it was training for the forces or training for MMA, it's not just about bigger, faster, stronger. It's bigger, faster, stronger, but also what's like longevity, right? Maintenance, longevity. So do you find that when you look at your training progression over the years, um, has the uh, sort of maintenance and longevity taken a more uh, prominent role or have, were you always doing that? much more prominent um and and yeah health is performance mm. like those two things like you, you the the more health you have and it's almost even that simple like if you focus on increasing your health mm. your performance you don't even have to necessarily train for performance mm-hmm. you know just by becoming healthier you perform better so it was an interesting uh kind of point where my rehab really took on a life of its own um, it was long ago, so I've been focusing on rehab for over a decade now. Okay, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. so rehab is probably one of the biggest pieces of my. It's probably what I spend the most time on out of all the blocks, mm-hmm. um, and it's been that way, just continuing to grow uh, for over a decade. What happened was 
um, in arm wrestling, when I was young, old arm wrestlers used to say, oh, Devin, this is a tendon sport. It's a ligament sport. And I never really understood it because I'm like, the muscles are doing the work here. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Like, I mean, but you don't notice until the tendons and ligaments become an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, okay, this is what's holding me back. Yeah. Uh, my right arm uh, by 2012 was a disaster. Mm -hmm. I had multiple surgeries. Um, you pick something that's wrong with an arm, and I had it. Okay. <laughs> so I always said, "Big brother, little brother." Okay. Whatever big brother did, little brother followed. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it forced me to, you know, through some research and understanding, I started to. Tr start to get an understanding of uh, the difference between training ligaments and tendons as opposed to training muscles. Mm -hmm. And I watched a uh, very interesting documentary called Strolling Under the Skin. Okay. And that's where they went in with microscopes and they observed the, um, they observed the fluid movement through the structures. Yeah. And they realized that they only feed when they move. Move, yeah. Right? So you have to move them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I started to realize this. So I started to change the way that I trained just to feed my, feed my connective structures, to feed them. Not even going for performance or, and just feed the structures, feed the structures. Um, and because my right was such a disaster, uh, my left was doing the same workouts and probably for about three months because it was in terrible shape. Uh, I probably didn't work out with more than 20 or 25 pounds tops, mm -hmm. uh, which for super heavyweight arm wrestling is. It's nothing. No. Uh, and I had a title shot with the left arm at that time, and I obliterated the dude. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. So, yeah, so basically after that, um, it really just became more and more part of my constant everyday routine. Yeah, okay. every day. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, one thing that uh, I think is interesting um, that you touched on, I, again, with in a conversation with Randy, we were talking about um, the you know, young guys incorporating rehab into their training. Um, because when you spend like more than a million dollars to train a guy, mm it doesn't make any sense to have this guy laid up on the sideline. And I, and I said to him, he was talking about how it's a hard sell to get the young guys to do the rehab stuff and, and all that kind of work. And I said, it, but you end up, just by virtue of keeping them on the playing field longer, you end up being more, like, just as you said, you don't have to do anything more effectively just because they are there more, right? Um, you, you are still increasing the overall effectivity of the force, right? Because instead of having this piece taken off the board, it's still there. Um, so it's the same kind of thing, you know, like you, you, you know you're not necessarily training bigger, faster, stronger, but, but because you can just do more work, because you've done all the rehab, maintained the health of the tissues, you're able to put in more work overall. And in the long run, like it, it's it's a... It is a long, long-term outlook rather than a short-term outlook. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, man. You you need to feed your tendons and ligaments. Well, um, I I did a video about um, uh, Larry Wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he was working with a. He was just doing a YouTube video um, with uh, a bodybuilder, Ryan Crowley, uh, uh, and and they were doing um, incline. Okay. Uh, oh, incline bench blew the blew the, yeah, blew the pack yeah. and and it, it's like and i did a video and i was trying to explain to people like ryan crowley has muscles that are big enough to do that right but he has not like larry trained his tendons over time to to withstand that load so he he ends up blowing the pec tendon not because he's weak it's just because he has not acclimate like he's used to doing submaximal loads and doing lots of them but he's not used to doing like uh you know one rm max yeah. uh, of heavy heavy weight there, there's a ton of factors that go into why an injury happened you know but it, it does not negate the requirement to do that stuff to prevent and then do it afterwards to fix because in any 
field, injury is going to happen. For sure. It's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. So, um, talking about uh, um, your, your previous training or your previous career, um, and you mentioned a little bit uh, about this. Is there anything, um, you know, being what you were previously employed as and being that this is a martial art of sorts, is there anything from your previous training that you think specifically was transferable to um, pro arm wrestling? And I'm not just talking, so this question is entirely open, so physical things and mental things. Mm. Um, I think from a, a physical perspective, um, I, I would say that, uh, you know, um, I mean, the physical skills of being an operator to being a, uh, a professional arm wrestler, the transfer is, is almost nil, okay? Like, if I was creating a special forces guy, I, I wouldn't care that he could arm wrestle at all. Mm -hmm. like it, to me, it's, it's low, low requirement. Um, but, uh, you know, that whole time you are very much a physical being. Yes. Very much. So all <laughs> the, the, the times that I had to fix myself and train myself and overall body work, I mean, I was learning that whole time mm -hmm. and all that information is transferable to any field because you're learning your body, you're learning how the systems work, you're learning how to get strong, you're learning how to perform. Um, so there's that. Uh, I would say that um, much more was the mental side of things. I mean, the the whole fight aspect. Uh, I would say comparatively to my peers in arm wrestling, I'm way ahead. Uh, you know, because of the seriousness of the the level of conflict that you're you train for as, yep. as an operator. I mean, you are going in and the stakes are as high as you can get, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so, so you know, with that kind of stress, I'd say, uh, I, I wouldn't maybe call it competency or stress, uh, you know, you're used to a level of pressure, you know, you're not gonna get that pressure on the arm wrestling table. <laughs> but let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, you can elevate it. You mm -hmm. can elevate it through all sorts of ways where you are still very comfortable and the other guy might not be. Well, so, you know, my next question and this, this perfect segue is like, so do you think, like, when you think about the situations that you've been involved in in your previous career, mm -hmm. many of which were like super hairy, right? So do you think, um, and I know what the answer will be, but um, do you think that like <laughs> mental, like it gives you a mental edge, right? Like, cause I, I, like I think about you, uh, like I, it's always funny. I'll watch videos of, of the guy staring you down. Hmm. <laughs> and then I think like, and I just think in my head, I go, you have no idea. Like they, they, right. they have no idea. It's like, it's like, what is, what does this mean to him? Like compared to what you've seen in the past. I mean, when you talk about transference and stuff, for sure, like, I mean, you, my overall stress, like, my heart rate is not gonna <laughs> go like that. Like, it's it's not, it's just not gonna be enough to trigger. But the, the thing is, for me, is, like, you do that job for, you know, I mean, I was at the Hill for, uh, I guess, 16 years, you know, forced for 20. Um, and I think you just get used to, very used to a level of stress. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. just very normal. And and then when it when you leave, um, it's part of you. It's you know, and you seek it out, seek it out. So you just that level of excitement, that level of stress, uh, you still try and create it. Mm -hmm. You know, in your life, you try and create it in scenarios, and, and you're always trying to push, right? So, so yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that I've brought to the sport is I've tried to add stress into the pool so that, uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's so much about making mistakes. And, and I don't know that, um, 
that that thing, that, that stress tolerance is going to necessarily make you win a match. Mm. However, it will certainly make you destroy a dude who's mm. faltering. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, so sometimes a match could maybe be close, but if a guy isn't good with pressure, uh, and you are, <laughs> you can totally destroy him, which is very, very appealing. <laughs> to kind of, you know, for my twisted soul, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, you know, I, I'll tell you, I miss it. I miss it a lot, you know, because because all the stress in arm wrestling. I mean, it's it's fun and it's great, but it's it's nothing like that. And you do miss it. You do miss it. So to all the guys who are serving and still serving, you know, enjoy your time, guys, because you're gonna be you're gonna be some old veteran. <laughs> you're gonna you know, be a normal human afterwards, trying, trying to get his kicks arm wrestled dude in the bar. <laughs> yeah, shit. There you go. Now let's get to the meat of this. What are some of the injuries? You know, you talked about your yeah. right arm. So what are some of the injuries that you've had um, as a result of uh, being a professional arm wrestler? So my biggest ones are chronic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're a, they're a result of, you know, uh, just too much uh, for too long uh, without enough recovery or whatever. Uh, most of my bad stuff is arthritic changes um, just due to joints being under a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is... That's straight. It's it's funny, um, you know. Every time I watched you or I see videos of you uh, arm wrestling, I watch you walking. Yeah. And and I watch the carrying angle of your elbows, yeah. and I was like, well. Uh, is that because he's got like his biceps are so developed that he's no. got contractures, or is that arthritis? Yeah, arthritis. <laughs> yeah it is. It's <clears throat> now. It's interesting. Um, it's a combination of arthritis and adaptation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I I once went downtown. Jay Pollock fixed me up many times. Yeah. Uh, cleaned me out, and I was able to straighten fully. Okay. Yep. But then within like months. It's right, back. Right back where it was. Mm-hmm. It's not boning at that point. Right. At that point, that's the capsule and Correct. everything kind of retracting again. Yep. To protect itself. So it's 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 both. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's a very common one. Is and not everybody gets it. Mm-hmm. It's it's like cauliflower ears. Yep. Some guys get it. Some guys don't. don't yeah. Right. So I get that. Uh, some guys get shoulder issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot elbow. Um, elbow elbow is is the common arthritic changes point. Mm-hmm. Shoulder um, often is an imbalance. Okay. okay, guys get really strong internal. Yep, and and not and so they get like a s- slow dislocation happening, leads to more arthritic changes. Yep, um, you will get dislocations of your wrist. You can see my wrist, right? You see mm-hmm. my right. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's permanently kind of out. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Uh, you will get um, you'll get muscle tears. Yep. You'll get muscles separating totally like you'll you'll get the bicep will blow mm-hmm. typically at the base yep uh sometimes mid muscular sometimes from the top mm-hmm. peckle tear okay um those are all quite common tears bicep pec mm-hmm. uh and then of course you have the arm break mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and that's always the same it's a spiral fracture yes just right above the the, the elbow joint yeah happens all the time yeah Happens all the time. Happens a lot with new guys. Okay. Guys who don't arm wrestle, girls who don't arm wrestle. Happens all the time. People in arm wrestling try and like be like, oh, it's not. no, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, people be popping their arms arm wrestling all the time. Which, which is why I said to you before, like, I, I don't even want to like, you know, guys, if we're like, you know, at a bar or whatever, and guys are like, yeah, it was arm. It's like, I don't even want to go there because I just think to myself, um, now, and you're going to explain to me, but in my mind, I said, oh, this is a rotational problem. I don't, and I don't train that ever. You know, sure, uh, in the OR, I'm hitting hammer, I'm doing, and, you know, working out, I'm doing lots of linear things, but I'm never doing anything rotation. I go, oh shit, I, I need my arms to operate. Well, I don't want to do that. But um, so you explain to me, People always say, or they think, oh, they got to train rotation. Why is that not the case? Right. So, look, there's many schools of thought, okay? Yep. And if you talk to 100 arm wrestlers, probably quite a lot of them will tell you that it's rotational. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'm, I'm smarter than they are. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me, educate. There's, there's a lot of ways you can do this game. But um, in my opinion, um, this internal rotation and, uh, and spiral pressure is it's, it's not, it's not at all what the sport is about. Okay. I, I don't even train it. Okay. I don't do it ever. Okay. Um, arm wrestling is about height. Mm. Yeah, it's about extent. It's about attacking weakness. Yes. Um, so when we arm wrestle, okay. Um, so there's this whole thing I'm trying to fight. Okay. Um, it's not about going where you're strong. People think oh, I'm strong like this. Yeah. It's just about attacking weakness. Okay. The weakest part of this whole system is the fingertips. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when when we arm wrestle, I'm just pulling up. I just pull up into your fingers. Okay. That's it. Because because that's that's the weakest part of the chain. Yeah. Smallest muscles. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So you you pull up, and that's what so much of the arm wrestling fight is about at the highest level. Okay. Who has more of this up drive? We call it rising. Yes. Okay. Because it's not just with the bicep; it extends all the way through the hand. This ability to climb. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It's very important. Okay. okay. And. and um, and then there's pronation. So these these two are probably your biggest strengths. This rising, yeah. This rolling. Uh, some people get things confused. This side pressure, this internal rotation, it's the last thing. Okay. It's the very last thing. Yeah. I don't want to say it's not a part of arm wrestling, but it's the last part of arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. There's also uh, I'll say that there's maybe four chains, four or five chains worth talking about. Okay, there's this rising chain. Yes. Okay, this upwards drive. Yep. This dictates everything. Mm -hmm. Whoever has more rise has more efficiency, has more technical choice. The other person has to hold on to you. Everything falls apart. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins the rise basically wins the match in high level arm wrestling. Okay. Um, there's this pronation chain. Is I always like to show this, right? <laughs> oh, so that's the that's the ability to turn your yeah, palm yeah. over, right? Yeah. Um, which couples with this strength we call cupping wrist flexion, but it's a chain, right? This, yep. but this is not this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is all you're designed to do this. Correct. Yeah. So so <laughs> this when when you think of doing this to your opponent, mm -hmm. what that does is it turns their palm up. Mm -hmm. Right, so this cupping and pronation work together. Yeah. So basically, when you rise up, yeah, it forces your opponent to have to cup if they want to stay in the match, mm -hmm. or at least move their shoulder forward. And, and and if they try and cup, then you can pronate. Mm -hmm. And if you successfully pronate through their wrist, they have no hand. Mm -hmm. Then all they're left with is this ability to push and break their arm if they want to break it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so at that point you shouldn't try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. At that point you should understand that you've lost. Well, so it's funny, you know, because you talk about all these chains, and I'm like, like I understand that there's different parts to the, to the process, different parts to the game, but it's like you break it down into all these steps. I'm like, holy shit. Uh, and I think, you know, the young guys or girls, they don't recognize all these different right. parts. And so they're like left with, oh, my God. Right, uh, right. Uh. So, I mean, what, what I tell people, what I tell everybody is, you know, everybody loves to arm wrestle. And I'm happy when I see kids do it. Mm -hmm. Like, because typically kids aren't strong enough to hurt themselves. Yes. Um, stuff starts to change around puberty. Mm -hmm. But... The thing that I always tell people is if you're going to arm wrestle on like tables, get some padding for your elbow because it's not good on hard surface, you know, get some padding. Um, if you have a strap, that's great, but I don't expect people to walk around with a strap like I have strap everywhere. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Changes arm wrestling a little bit. Um, but to practice, to practice on a table, um, to go slow, get with a club. Mm. Get with the club. If you're interested in the sport of arm wrestling, know that you can hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah. You will hurt yourself. Yeah. If you like the idea of the sport, learn the basic exercises. This this rising, it's 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 a variation of a curl. Just basically instead of curling, you're you're putting more emphasis in this upwards movement. Okay. Yep. You have the variation of a curl through the thumb. So you're curling but you're using your thumb as uh, with a belt. Yeah. 
Um, and then you have just basically rowing with an emphasis on your wrist. Yeah. If you do those three things, <laughs> you're going to you're gonna just start to feel these movements and they're going to become natural to you. And then when you get an arm wrestling table, you're going to do the and you're going to feel it very mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, to the untrained, unknowing person, which I was, you know, everybody just cranks it. So, um, so all of these different movements that you talk about, how much of it when you're, when you're all in a match, okay, uh, or even just practicing, how much of it is like you paying attention, looking at the guy, watching what he's doing versus you just feeling it? Like you feel where the pressure is going. You go, oh, okay, I know. Yep, that's happening. Bang, right? This is happening. Yeah. yeah. Like, like how much of it is feel? How much of it is you watching? The longer you do it, the more it's just feel. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and part of it is you can be ahead of the person and they're having to react to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes you don't even have to think what they're doing because you are going to do what you're going to do. Yep. And you can do it better than they can and they're going to have to react to you. And then there's some adjustments for sure that, that start to be played. But um, you do have to be able to feel, you have to be able to understand the movements of the game. Um, there's, there's, I'll say that there's three concepts, okay? This is going to be maybe a bit tricky. I'll try and explain it here. So the first concept is that you actually legit have to be strong at the movements. Yes. There's no getting around it. Sure. Uh, and those movements are the basic move, the rise, the cup, the roll, the supinate, the grip and drag, okay? These are basic movements, basic chains that no matter your style of arm wrestling, because mm. it's like a martial art, mm -hmm. Every arm wrestler probably they have their style, or maybe they got a couple styles. But they'll say, "Okay, I still, even though I don't practice it, I see, the, I understand that that style has a place." Yes. People win world championships with just this chain mm -hmm. and a little bit of balance around it. Um, so first, you have to be strong. The second thing you have to understand is now this is when you come to a weaker person beating a stronger person, which happens all the time, mm -hmm. okay, is, is you can never fight a losing battle, mm. okay? So what that means is you try and do your thing, you're going to get beat trying to do your thing. So you have to be able to retreat. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's the thing about the hand and the wrist and the arm is there's so many contradictory motions. You know, if I'm trying to go this way as hard as I can and I can't do it, well, maybe if I go this way as hard as I can, There'll be a hole somewhere mm -hmm. for me to fit in, mm -hmm. right? So you have to be able to not fight a losing battle. You have to be able to recognize when you're being overwhelmed to have an option elsewhere. Yes. Okay. And the third rule, okay, is how to respond to this person mm -hmm. who is adjusting to you. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a very interesting rule. It's, it's to not take what's being given to you. Right, because there are fundamental rules of arm wrestling, okay? This rise, this cup, this roll, this keeping the arm inside your body. It's what we call fundamental arm wrestling. Go outside that, you're doing defensive arm wrestling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? Which totally works, mm -hmm. okay? But as soon as you recognize somebody's defensive arm wrestling, they're giving you something. They're giving you one of those aspects. They're giving you their, their pronation. They're giving you their cup. They're giving you something so that they can get in somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is to not take what they're giving you and actually go the opposite direction, which is very counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. And this is the this is what kind of this is one of the separation points in a person's technical understanding of the sport. Yeah. And, and the problem is is to be able to do it fast enough. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's when it comes to the whole feel thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys who practice the sport for, you know, ten years or more, you know, they start to be able to really recognize and by the way. I always say that any dude who's like a healthy guy, and I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even that interested in the weight. So basically, once you're like a 150 pound guy and you're a healthy dude, four years of solid arm wrestling training, and you will beat just about anybody. Really? Yeah, just about. Yeah. Like there's, there are outliers, of course, but like pretty much once you got like four or five years in the sport, you'll beat anybody who doesn't train. And they, they can be a big jack, power lifter, monster, strong man, whatever, that you're just going to beat them. That's just be, and is that because of just the, the, having the fundamentals down? 
the fundamentals, the strengths will become strong enough that you'll technically be able to put people in positions where they just, it's just no good choices for them. Like regular people will not understand what's important. Yeah. And they will give things away. And then what happens is a, a trained guy will have all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, you did that. <laughs> right? Oh, boy. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's why it's like a martial art, right? Like, because, like, I know, like, I'm, I'm a bigger, stronger dude, you know, and, and I even have martial arts experience. Mm-hmm. I do. But I know that 160 pound dude with cauliflower ears who lives on a mat and has got, you know, rashes all over his legs i don't i don't want to touch it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you're gonna mess me up man yeah 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 he, i'm gonna do one mistake and it's done yeah yeah it's the same thing in arm wrestling mm-hmm. you make one mistake and it's just it's just gonna get worse yeah. it, it's um it's funny so so randy has uh um i was actually talking about randy okay. <laughs> that's who i met okay okay yeah. well, well listen but okay. well so he he said to me a few times um, oh, you know, just come down and uh, like I got an uh, open gym on Saturday or whatever and, and we can roll and stuff. Yeah. And I just think to myself, okay, I, I outweigh this dude by 60 yeah. pounds, but uh, I'm not oh, really he's gonna interested. Mess you up. He, he's going to, oh, yeah, like, yeah, I sure. know. Like, but he'd be good to you. Randy's a good guy. No, for sure yeah. he would. But I, I just think, oh, this is going to be a lesson in humility. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so tell me something. Now, when you're in a match, right? Like, is do you know right from the start? Oh, okay, yeah, I got this. Or is it much more of a um, you know point counterpoint battle back and forth where you're not sure how it's going to go and you're just looking for openings, looking for mistakes? Um, you can always learn, right? Uh, and you can be taught things. Mm-hmm. That you didn't know were coming. Yep. Yep. Uh, but at, at the level that I'm pulling at, I start to have a very good idea very quickly. Mm-hmm. I, I, I typically will have a very good idea basically as soon as I touch your hand. Okay. Yeah. I can, most arm wrestlers, you know, we shake hands. I can tell right there. <laughs> yeah. Just by the way, hey, oh. just by the way you touch me, I can pretty much tell if you're going to give me a problem or not. Well, having said that, are there any, are there guys that sandbag? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But even then, you can tell. <laughs> you can tell. Yeah. So, even, even when they're trying no, to the sandbag. Best, the best guys are sandbagging. Okay. Yeah, best yeah. arm wrestlers will sandbag you right to the grave. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. will not show you their cards, but you'll know because they should, you won't feel it. You'll mm-hmm. be like, why aren't I feeling this, 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 and this, and this? And then you'll be like, okay, this guy's hiding. Mm-hmm. He hides this and this. And the best guys don't show you anything. You, and that's the thing about um, holding on mm-hmm. um, and this <clears throat> rise thing, right? Like great arm wrestlers will never hold on to you. Never. Mm. They will not touch you. They will insist that you come to them. Mm-hmm. Never hold you. It will go into a strap. Yeah. And then the strap will decide. Yeah. No, the action of holding on to someone yeah. is flawed. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's the same as social dynamics. If you reach for someone or come to someone or they got you. Yeah. They got you. Yeah. 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 You can't. You can't. You need to hold the high ground. Yep. You need to have people come to you. And as soon as they do, you have the upper hand. Yeah. yeah over the top. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, you talked a little bit about, uh, um, you know, newcomers to the sport. So um, is there anything that, uh, you know, athletes, but in particular lay people, um, can do to avoid some of these catastrophic injuries that you talked about? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'd say the first thing right away is if, if you are thinking about, you know, arm wrestling, um, don't go so hard. Really don't. Like, I mean, I know that's a, just a silly thing for me to probably say because nobody's going to listen to that. Get with the club. Mm. Get with the club. You want to not get hurt? Get with the club. Uh, do the exercises. Do hammer curls. Uh, look at your hand, okay? There's, there's a process of, of shoulder alignment. Um, the thing that really breaks you is spiral pressure, mm-hmm. okay? Now, arm wrestling breaks happen in all sorts of positions. People say, oh, it's this position. No, it happens all over, okay? Mm-hmm. But the thing that's really causing it 
is this spin. Basically, like when you're throwing a ball. Yep. Right? You're throwing a ball or... Um, or like in martial arts, a key lock, like when they grab the wrist and they stick. Mm, yep, yep. Okay, it's the same, it's the same. Arm wrestling is like a <laughs> self-imposed key lock, like you're trying to throw uh, a thousand pound ball and it's not... And, not and, moving and you're cranking it. And you're gonna try and throw it. Mm-hmm. A- and that spin through the body has to translate through this bone. Mm-hmm. And it's we're not really designed to throw things that are a thousand pounds. Yeah, you know, like we can we're designed to throw to a certain degree, but not not that. We're not designed really to do that motion. So we shouldn't even do it when we arm wrestle. Mm-hmm. Understand that you're going to win by coming over top of the person's hand. Yeah. Or now this is um and this is what I we try and teach everybody this. It's it's outside arm wrestling. It's what you call a top roll, a post. This upwards drive, this upwards pulling up into a person's finger, and then you bend your wrist or roll. This is safe. Do that. Mm-hmm. You're probably not going to get hurt. As soon as you start to come forward, bring the shoulder forward, you're likely going to start to have spiral pressure more. Mm-hmm. Not that you can't have it outside, but more likely. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're going to come forward, what you want to do is you want to be behind your arm. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's a push as opposed to here. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Spiral. Yeah. Okay, so this bad, this good. Mm-hmm. So keep the elbow inside. Yeah, and, and don't arm wrestle if you don't drink a lot of milk and you know <laughs> work out. Like, don't be doing it. Yeah. It's crazy. It's That's crazy. right, man. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you mentioned a little bit before uh, about how you know what you've done with your your training process, your rehab process. Um, but just talk a little bit about, you know, how you specifically have dealt with injuries, um, when it comes to recovery and training. So, you know, you've been injured, you've gone to see my colleague Jay, and then now you're rehabbing. So what is, what is your recovery, your your rehabilitation work look like at that time? And what does your training look like uh, around that time? Uh, like post-surgery, post-surgery, post-injury, yeah. Um, I, I very much, very much, and this doesn't even have to do with injury so much, but now I just listen to my body so much and I just, if it doesn't feel good, I don't do it. Okay. Uh, you know, and if it feels good, I'm happy to do it. Um, I, I try to get back on the horse as quick as possible. That's what I do, you know. Like, I mean, I tore my bicep, and eight days later, I was I was on the table arm wrestling. You know, I, I had I had elbow surgery. I think. Hey, I hope Jay's not listening. Jay, oh, believe me, Jay knows. Jay, Jay knows. <laughs> I mean, I had surgery, and I was I was on an arm wrestling table. I think two days after my surgery. Okay. Um, now I'm very responsible. Mm-hmm. I'm not being an idiot, right? Yep. I'm on that table, and I'm just doing what I can. Sure. That's it. And I tell my partners. It's a lot about communication, you know. Some some therapy is done as an individual. Some, yep. you know, you do together. And at that point, you know, communication is super important. Talk to them. Be have them be nice to you. Yep. Um, understand that things are progressive. Um, understand that things take time. I, I focus a lot on blood flow and understand that uh, the body has the information inside of it. It just needs to be fed. You know. So one thing that I like very much that you said uh, what was the name of that film again strolling under strolling the skin. Under, i gotta look that up man. it's a great because clip. i like the idea of how you said i am just doing movements every day to get fluids through those tissues yeah. and it's like oh my god that like that is such a brilliant idea, right? And it's not meaning it's necessarily i'm working hard i'm smashing it it's just fluid through the tissues I'm going to tell you one of the most interesting concepts that I've stumbled across through my years. So one of the things that we attract in our sport is a certain type of disorder. Yes. So we attract what I could call hellboys. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you've seen these people, but they have, and this isn't from training. This is from birth. Okay. They have one limb that is like mega. 
Okay. You yeah. Yeah. People? Yeah. So the, yeah, you can. I can't right now. The name of the term uh, escapes me. The the medical uh, terminology for that. Um, but yes, I, I have seen that before. And I think there's a few things that cause it. Okay. I think I don't think that every single person like this has this disorder. However, I do believe that one of the reasons why people have this disorder is an arterial imbalance from the heart. Mm-hmm. Right. So the one limb. <laughs> gets like way better. more perfusion yes yes right so so that means from the time they are like by the time they come out of the womb they are ready okay and, and so what that tells me is and when you look at the one arm and when you look at the other arm that's not even the same person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and to a point where yes it has better health it has better recovery it has better ability but it, it goes all the way to the attachment points are different. Mm-hmm. Like the one arm will have like low attachment points, and the other points is attached like a caveman. It's like, and that is, and that is just from blood. Mm-hmm. So I feel very strongly that, you know, what the human design is supposed to look like. Like if we were somehow perfectly fed, f- perfectly oxygenated, mm-hmm. I think we would be even more spectacular. Mm-hmm. So, so that's, that's something that arm wrestling's taught me is that so much is just about feeding the tissues so that they can properly express their yeah. potential. Yes. Okay. No, I actually, I, I love that. I, I think that makes so much sense. And, and, and already I'm thinking about ways I'm going to change what I tell my patients postoperatively, you know, just based on this conversation. Um, because yeah. I think there's so much gold there. I've had I've had incredible results. Mm-hmm. I have uh, like I I've I've you know, 2012, you know I've gone on to win world championships. Right now I'm still heavyweight world champion. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been told there's nothing there. I've been told there's no cartilage. I've been told that you know I should stop doing it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, perfect segue. Next question: um, What does the future hold for Devin Larratt, uh, where arm wrestling is concerned? Uh, I will continue to compete for as long as I can. Yep. At the highest level I can. Um, I will continue with this experiment that I'm running. I'm going to continue this way of the giant pumpkin thing. I told myself I'd give myself a good five or seven years before I you know considered wrapping it up and i know that there's a lot of issues with it but it's fascinating to me mm-hmm. so i'll continue this experiment so i'll compete more um i want to uh do more in terms of uh the organization and the promotion of the sport i get a lot from that mm-hmm. you know uh, uh i want to um Introduce it into more people's lives, children, veterans, um, people who uh, could benefit. Um, yeah, and just have fun. Man. You know, it's when I hear you say, uh, you know, being ambassador for the sport, introducing it to children and stuff. It's funny. It's such a um, dichotomy between what you previously did. Yeah. Like, and and in that. Like, uh, you're trying to be as menacing as possible. Mm. And then to, you know, and, and it's not to say that arm wrestling is not menacing, but then the, the aspect that you're talking about, being an ambassador and introducing it to the children, I just, it's, it's just so weird to, to, to look at that dichotomy, right? Mm. And, and look at how different those two images are. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, did you ever think that you'd be like being the ambassador and hey, no, let's get your kids involved. No, I certainly didn't. I mean, the last. I mean, I've kind of evolved into it where I'm. I'm one of the people who's mm-hmm. at uh, who's influential in the sport. There's a lot of us. There's a lot of people who have come from you know loving the sport for one reason or another. Many of us have competed. Uh, and many of us have understood the value that it has, you know, outside of just sport. Okay. Um, and I think that many of us are motivated to, uh, uh, you know, keep that growing as a part of 
are, you know, what it is to be in this community of people. Yep. Uh, and yeah, kids is a big part of that, right? Cool. Yeah. Um, and how, like, how often are you competing now? Uh, I compete. I want to compete more this year. Uh, now, at the highest level, I mean, if I can do like two or three big, big shows, now it's interesting because I was competing super heavyweight, okay? And super heavyweight is hard. Okay. Like, so what's the what's weight cutoff? Or what, just, yeah, where's the weight cutoff between heavyweight and super heavyweight? <clears throat> it depends on the league, but 253 is where I'm at right now. So 115 kilo, mm -hmm. that's where... I'm currently residing, but I could do 110, I could do 105. So long, here's the thing. It's so much easier on my body. You know, for me to compete at, at, at a weight, it doesn't require the rest, it doesn't require the, the buildup. Uh, I can do it more frequently, and it's much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to live such a crazy Spartan life. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm competing super heavyweight, and I'm doing so optimally, yeah. Man, my life has to be so simple. Mm -hmm. Like I can't have a lot of fun, uh, you know. <laughs> so heavyweight lets me kind of lead more of a regular life, do more things that I like to do, and have the ability to compete more often. So I'll be competing here probably in a couple weeks. Okay. And then probably every two months or so this year, I'm hoping. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that that two months two month uh, break in between, uh, like is that the amount of time necessary for you to sort of rehab and, and train or is it just just a, you know a arbitrary time time you yeah arbitrary the, the longer I have the more I can peak okay okay you give me two years and I will present to you the most beautiful flower you know, you <laughs> the give biggest me, damn right? pumpkin you've just ever seen beautiful and pristine yeah um, but if you let me kind of just lead a lifestyle where I'm competing more frequent I won't get the the same peak however uh, you know having done it for such a long time uh, a weight class is it's it's manageable it's manageable but if I were to lose and try the longer you give a person the higher their peak can be, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Um, second last question. So you said that you are training about three times a day, each of the different uh, chain or each of the different phases or chains. Um, roughly, how much time per day are you training? I'd say now it's it's really it's more like lifestyle, really. Mm -hmm. Like I basically train all day, <laughs> really. Like I mean, I don't. It's hard for me to even tell you like. How much time exactly? Because if I'm at home, I will do a lift, do a, a session, sit on the couch, do some admin, go book over, and it'll be like that from morning till night. Okay. Yeah, I'll just continuously do my work, do my work, do my work. I don't, I don't exhaust myself the way I did when I was a kid. Sure. Well, kid when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd say if you want to total it up, I mean. A lot of the work I do is singles, so like just singular lifts. So I mean, that's a, just a few seconds, sure. right? But um, uh, if I said three sessions and each session is maybe uh, an average of maybe 45 minutes, um, and then I might have a practice and a practice will go longer, practice might go two and a half hours, um, and then singles all through the day. I mean, maybe three and three and a half hours on a normal day. Three and a half hours. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I very much enjoy it. Sometimes it's less. Yeah. Sometimes it's more. Uh, does your wife ever go enough, Darren? Or, or <laughs> Devin? <laughs> enough? Uh, balance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad with balance. I'm really bad. I, I listen, man. I, I my wife is always telling me like yeah. I'm I'm a type type A personality. Like I have one speed and yeah. it's going all the time. I, I really I get obsessed with stuff and that's all I want to do. Um, there's my wife and I have been together since high school. Okay. Okay. So she knows me better than I know myself. Sure. So yeah. she knows what she's in for. She knows what she signed up for. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right, last question, young man. It's funny I can call you that. Um, but last question, young man. Uh, where can people find you online? Uh, well, I have YouTube. I have Instagram. Um, 
I have TikTok and stuff. I mean, the best place to find me, yeah, is probably probably Instagram is where I post more of my lifestyle stuff. So you know where I'm at because I'll post a story or whatever Instagram. But um, you want to get in touch with me, and you're in Ottawa, find the Ottawa High Hookers. Okay. Yeah, come and hang out with us. Yeah, okay. come come and train with us. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm down there. I'm just one of the guys on the team. Uh, and I'm down there three times a week when I'm at home. So, yeah, come find us in Ottawa. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I lied. Second last question. Um, um, just maybe what something you said made me think about it. Um, so, you know, in your previous life, it was supposed to, you you it needed to keep your identities kind of low key and, and not be out there. Huh. Um, you're you're younger than me but you're still we're of the same vintage mm -hmm. um so tell me how do you find all this social media like you know because yeah. you got the instagram yeah. facebook facebook the twitter the TikTok, the what it's interesting isn't it how, how do you find all of this very interesting i, I love it i uh, i uh i don't read but i consume a lot of social media mm -hmm. i do i i uh it's very interesting times that we live in um, I find that uh, the three are, I, I use primarily YouTube, yep. Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, those are my three favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's Facebook also, but Facebook I find is more family. Yep. Um, to me, Facebook is family stuff. Uh, TikTok is very interesting. TikTok is so condensed. Mm -hmm. I feel like you get the most information in the shortest time, the most, like, you have to be very precise about what your message is on TikTok. Mm -hmm. TikTok is about very quickly expressing a feeling or something that is attractive to someone, um, which, is, which is beautiful. Um, I love TikTok. Uh, I personally find TikTok to be potentially the most addictive out of all of them. Like if I get on TikTok, like, oh, it's I like get, where did that hour go? Like, that's what I like. That's what I like. That's what I like. <laughs> um, Their algorithm, they yeah. have that down. Yeah, they do. Uh, Instagram, I really like as well when it comes to images. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Instagram images. Uh, YouTube, YouTube for me is where I get all my information on the community. Mm -hmm. So the arm wrestling community is rich on YouTube. Uh, basically, everything that's going on, uh, you know, you follow all the key channels, and you are going to know everything that's happening in the sport. And that's, basically, I follow arm wrestling. There's a, I, I follow a few sports loosely, yep. and I follow <clears throat> arm wrestling super intense. Okay. So, yeah, it's wild, man. I, I, love, I love the social medias. Um, I, I personally just record and post yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of my stuff is basically <laughs> blog and yeah yeah and then sometimes it gets a bit refined but yeah it's wild times we live in um one one last thing um given your previous occupation so people uh um always talk about tiktok you yeah because it's being owned by china or, yeah. does that ever concern you bother you oh man i i i uh no <laughs> no, it doesn't. Like, I mean, in the end, we're all one thing. Yeah. Like, whether whether it's China, whether it's... There's so many points of separation between yes. the top and where I am, and we're all one thing. I mean, whether China's calling the shots or U.S., it, it ends up being the same thing. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't... And, and what information are they learning? Oh, are the, the, you're talking about the algorithm pushing, how they're pushing us crap and they're learning. Both, both. They, number one, their, their TikTok is supposed to be yeah. educational yeah, and ours is that. just That's debauchery. Love it. They want yeah. us to be dumber. But yeah. also, you know, there is the idea of whatever, whatever information that they're learning from us or taking from I, us. I'm, right? not, I'm not concerned about any of that stuff. Uh, you know, whatever. Whatever. Seriously, I feel like I, I use the stuff to get what I'm looking for. Okay. I think the algorithm gives you what you're looking for. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, yeah. Hey, well, it's been great. Yeah, I'm so and glad. You know what? I, from now on, I, I'm always going to be thinking about how I grab somebody's hand. Well, it's like, oh, I'm going to shake hands like this. Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, everybody... 
What did they learn from my handshake? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I remember when I first got in the sport, like, arm wrestlers shake hands more than any subculture in the world. Yeah. We we're going around handshake, 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 handshake yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun little game, man. Yeah. Well, you know, the one thing, um, so at the hospital, um, they have different glove sizes, right? Yeah. And the largest size that they bring, um, I'm sure they have bigger sizes, but the largest size they bring is a size nine. Yeah. Right. And I wear a size nine glove and they make fun of me because I uh, wear a size nine glove. Yeah. And all I could think about when I shook <laughs> your hand is like, why is my hand feel uh, like a baby's hand compared to yours? Yeah, you got strong hands. You got big hands. Jesus, yeah. but they're nothing compared to the size of yours, well, man. Well, I'm a professional. <laughs> I'm a professional. I'm supposed to have big hands. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, um, Devin, man, this has been a blast. And I definitely got to chat with you again about other topics. But uh, once again, I'd like to say thank you very much for uh, spending this last hour with me um, and uh, teaching me about all things arm, arm wrestling related. It, I, you know, it's been an honor having you here. And uh, I can't wait to put this video out because I think it's going to be amazing. Thank you so much, buddy. No yeah. worries, brother. And well, next time, I'll bring you down the club, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Cool.